So I know this is gonna sound crazy, but I'm actually pretty sure one of my ducks is blind. And so in today's video, we're gonna test it out and see if our farm has a blind duck. All right, let's do this, dogs. We're gonna go greet the birds and see if we can find that blind duck. Now let's give it a moment and see if you guys can spot which of the ducks I'm talking about here. <laughs> So did you guys see her? All right, let's see if we can spot her again for you. So most of my ducks are either Khaki Campbell or Cayuga or Runner Ducks. And I also have a lot of hybrid ducks these days. who are basically a mix of genetics that I've been building up over the last couple of years. But here she is. She keeps running around with her head down. She kind of knows to follow all the other ducks. Whoop. So normally it would not be that easy to catch a duck. Usually I would have to bust out like my fishing net to catch my duck. So, but yes, this is the duck right here that I think is actually blind. Now, some of you OG Goldshaw farm viewers might actually recognize this duck because she has a little bit of a history. Does she look familiar to any of you? Can you guys recognize her? And no, she's not Ron Swanson. Ron Swanson's probably the most famous duck we have in our flock these days. You see, because Ron Swanson is the duck who thinks that she's a goose. And this duck though does have a weird relationship with a goose. You see, because this duck is Bean the duck. Do you guys remember Bean from about two years ago? So a couple of years back, I had a mama goose who hatched a bunch of goslings. But the only problem was this mama goose was a terrible mother. Like, I mean, she hatched these babies out, but it seemed like she had no interest in mothering. If my memory serves me correct, I think she lost like two of them. And she had this third gosling that I was really worried about, and I did not think she was going to be able to raise to adulthood. And so I decided to take that gosling in and raise it myself. The only problem is all of my other goslings had already matured to the point that I didn't want to mix this like two day old gosling in with a bunch of older goslings because I was worried it would get hurt. And because ducks and geese and chickens are all flock animals, it is a terrible idea to try to raise any of those birds alone. And they really need a friend. Well, luckily for both the gosling and me at the time, on our farm at the same exact time, we had some mama ducks that had hatched out a whole bunch of ducklings. I think I had like a dozen ducklings running around. And I think those ducklings were about, I don't know, five, six days old. Now a two day old gosling is a little bit bigger than a six day old duckling. And so I figured they could probably work out as partners. And so I stole one of those ducklings and I raised it with my goose. And let me tell you, there is no more heartwarming story to watch than a duckling and a gosling growing up together and being the best of friends. Because that right there is most definitely the situation that we had on our farm, where this duckling and gosling grew up together, they were the best of friends, and I even named them Frank and Bean. Frank being the gosling, Bean being the little duckling, and I don't know, it just seemed like a cute, clever combination of names. I think actually a viewer suggested it. And the funny thing about Frank the goose is, she, and she is a she because you don't really know duckling or gosling sexes when they're young, or at least I don't. She actually had just a lot of good energy. And my idea was to actually train her to ultimately be like a guard animal for my chickens, but that didn't quite work out. You see, because she was being raised with the duckling, she really attached and bonded with other ducks. And so when I eventually released her out to my flock in the pasture, she actually became the goose who befriended the ducks. And you can actually see Frankie right there. Hey Frankie. It's actually kind of funny to me because Ron Swanson is the duck who thinks that she's a goose and Frank is essentially the goose who thinks she's a duck. And you know, that's just how it is on our farm sometimes. By the way, if you're looking for Ron Swanson, there she is hanging out with her gooses right over there. Well now, as you guys are hearing me go through this long winded explanation, you're probably figuring out that this little duckling right here, this right here is Bean the Duck. And the thing about Bean the Duck is she's always been kind of an odd duck. You see, because she was raised with a gosling, I don't know, she never quite developed all of the social skills of all the other ducks. And even though she does generally spend most of her time with the ducks, a lot of times I find that she spends a lot of time by herself, just kind of off doing her own thing. Abby. No. Yes, that chicken's playing in a spot where she shouldn't, but that doesn't mean you should be correcting her. So Abby, right here, she likes to get a little bossy with the chickens. And I have this one chicken who somehow got herself stuck behind the chicken wire, which I'm sure she can probably get her way out. Well, Abby 
was trying to coax her out because Abby did not feel like she belonged there. But you know, sometimes, girl, that causes a little bit more harm than good, and you gotta be careful. By the way, though, are you watching that? So see how Abby is able to, like, nuzzle up to this duck, and this duck is not freaking out? That's because I don't think she can see Abby, because I'm pretty certain she's blind. And I'm honestly not even sure if she's always been blind and I never quite noticed it, or if it's something that's developed over the last couple of years. But either way, it's kind of interesting to see this duck interact with the world. Like, she doesn't blink. Like, most ducks would typically blink if I was moving my fingers this close to their eyes, but she doesn't do that. But she can sense movement, and she can sense touch, and she, like, always will move and respond to my touch, but never anything to my motion. She might feel, like, the breeze of my arm moving, and I think she can kind of feel that. But I watch her walk around and do her thing, and she just kind of, like, seems to dotter around, operating mostly on sound and, like, I don't know, just detecting what she's bumping into versus virtually any other duck out there. And so I have started to develop the theory that she's blind. And girl, I just want you to know that it's okay. If you're a little bit different, it doesn't mean you're a bad duck. It just means you're a different duck and you have your own special abilities. When I say special abilities, I mean like the fact that I'm able to hold her and just have her chill out with me like this. And this is not a trait that I would see in any of my other ducks. You know, the ducks I raise here on this farm are semi-feral. And so it's not like they're very socialized to me and it's not like they're handled very regularly. And so the fact that I have this one duck who's kind of like this, I don't know, it's kind of nice. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, what am I gonna do with a duck like Bean? And the answer, quite honestly, is nothing. I'm just gonna let her be a duck in her own special way. But yeah, here, watch how she's like crashing into things. She can hear her ducks over in the back and so she's going back to everybody, but she's kind of confused too. See, now she's close to her ducks again. And so she feels like she's got her group, but she's not quite following them. And uh-oh, you're gonna walk into the wall there, girl. Boom. See, yeah, she just walked into the dust baths. So yeah, there you go. That is being the blind duck. Now I'm not 100% sure and I am not gonna take her to a vet to get it checked out because if the vet told me that she was blind, there would be absolutely nothing I would do differently. And so it would just be a waste of money and more curiosity than anything else. But if anybody out there who's watching this video has had experiences with blind ducks, I'd be very curious to hear about them. But yeah, like I said, generally speaking, she fits in with her duck flock and she does just fine. I wouldn't want to release her out into the wild or anything, but because she's a farm duck, I don't think it's going to be much of a problem. Gosh, I just missed it on camera. But these chickens were just pecking at Toby and he was just kind of ignoring it. You're just chilling out? You're being a good patient boy? Yeah? You ready for me to release the quacken? Release the quacken! And usually that just ends up being releasing the chickens, but yeah. So it has been exceptionally warm here on the farm right now. Like yesterday, it got up to like 48 degrees Fahrenheit. And so everything is just a mess of ice and mud and a little bit of bird poop. And so it's very, very gross. Isn't that right, ladies? But yeah, at this point, I think there's probably no more than six inches of snow on pasture. Everything's starting to melt off in a big, big way. It's kind of chaotic right now. I feel like this is the fourth mud season that we've had so far this year. I mean, we even had a mud season in December. Mud season is just kind of the term that we use here locally to denote like kind of that time period when all the snow melts and the days get nice and warm and everything just turns to muck and mud. And that's definitely what we got going on here. But yeah, if I look out under the main pasture, you can even see there's some bald spots where it gets sunniest. And that's not to say that we're not gonna get a couple more cold streaks and a couple more snowstorms this winter, but it definitely has the spring vibe to things. And this is feeling like yet another mild winter in a series of several mild winters. Did you see that? Abby Dog's making Abby Angels. What you doing, Abs? Toby Dog's like a detective doing forensic evidence discovery as he checks out the different pockets of poop ensuring that it's either duck or goose poop versus something more nefarious. Abby Dog's kind of like his rookie partner who makes a lot of mistakes and is a little bit hot-headed. But I still love you, and you got a heart of gold. And one day you're gonna make a good detective. The geese have been really out and active. Like, they've actually been spending a lot of their day, like yesterday, they were down over on that side. I even had to bring them in for the night, which is usually very rare. But when the weather gets nice, they like to explore a lot more than the other birds. Abby, 
Don't try to play with Black Francis. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, Barry White. I know, he's a white chicken, and that's like your, your weakness. That's a good girl. He's gonna do whatever he wants, and you have to leave him alone. If I'm gonna ever be able to trust you with chickens, you gotta get over this. Remember how I showed you earlier, Toby Dog was just sitting there, letting the chickens even peck at him? That's how you've gotta behave. You can't be curious about them, and you can't wanna try to play them, and you can't wanna boss them around. You gotta just let the chickens do their thing. And right now, Barry White's like, oh, I'm going inside. <laughs> get you out. Oh, freshly laid. She just dropped this egg. I'm talking 30 seconds ago, 45 seconds ago. Ooh, here, I'll stash it in here for my egg collection time. Oh, we got a full house in here. I was gonna try to change the shavings, but it looks like we got some active girls here. Let me just get this one egg. I'll add fresh shavings later. It's okay, girls. They get real sassy if you try to interrupt them while they're laying. Well, 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 if it isn't Mr. Pablo Barncat. Good to see you, buddy. Abby, are you gonna be friendly with Pablo and not get in his business? How's my Pablo Barncat? Oh. Hey, 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 don't get sassy with me just because Abby gets in your space. Pablo goes from friendly to vicious real quick. He doesn't put up with crap. All right, Allison has this whole thing where she gets actually mad when I try to pet Pablo and he gets in this type of a mood because she says I'm enabling him and she's probably not wrong. Rise and grind, weirdos. How's it going, Bet? Good to see you, Mr. Frizzle. Howdy, Lavender Brown. There's only three of our weird chickens. Where's our fourth one? Carmen. Where you at? Carmen? Where are you? Oh, <laughs> there you are. You're still roosting? Okay, well, you take your time. It's all good. Yeah, so all the other weird chickens tend to sleep in the corner. Carmen likes to roost up here. It's very funny. But yeah, she's got her own personal space up here. I love those weird chickens. All right, let's have a weird chicken moment of zen, huh? So it seems like with the weather getting better, the weird chickens are starting to become a little bit more curious and explore a little bit more, which I think is kind of exciting. I mean, they're not gonna be as active as my other chickens, but they do seem like they're starting to explore their space more versus just eating, drinking, pooping, and sleeping, being zen, obviously. Ah, so Pablo, I see you've now found your perch, place where Abby can't bother you. Is that what's going on here? Now will you let me pet you? Oh, that's a sweet Pablo. Yeah. When you don't get all fighty, you can be a very sweet cat. Pablo, oh, oh, really? You're gonna have to go that route? All right. <laughs> so as I was filling up the boys' water troughs this morning, notice how just muddy it's getting over here. They're over there and all the spilled hay actually makes for good absorber. But I do think I need to do a little extra today and help fight mud season. Oh boy, Macho Man's excited. It's not hay, my friend. It's just straw to pick up the gross. I find that adding the straw really helps absorb the mud and soak things up and keep it a little bit cleaner over here. Whoa, easy, Joey. They get excited by it, so I gotta be careful. That corner is a good way to end up squished. And Joey and Randy, while they don't feel like they're gonna attack me, they like to wrestle with each other. And getting caught in the crossfire is really the risk I'm worried about. I think Joey thinks it's food, which it's not. But yeah, they like to play with it which helps me actually spread it around, so I'm not too concerned. Hey there, Ginevra Barncat, how are you doing? Hi, Jin. Wanna climb up? <laughs> yeah, see, Pablo hangs out over by the bird yard these days, and Ginny hangs over by the barnyard, just how it works. People often ask if they're friendly, and I would say they're not. Oftentimes, I'll actually even have to deal with them like fighting. I was actually in the barn yesterday shooting a video for my other YouTube channel, and they started fighting and I had to break it up. It was a little chaotic, but yeah. For those who are wondering about both of our outdoor barn cats, they are doing well, even though one of them likes to stick her butthole in my face. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Missy. So while I'm in the straw spreading mood, let's spread out another bale. Oh, I know you're excited for this, but don't pee on it, please, because this bale of straw is going into the doghouse. So we've actually had a kind of unexpected turn of events when it comes to dog houses this winter. Last year, both dogs really enjoyed using this house as their primary home. But what I've noticed is this year, they've actually been using this house as their primary home. They still really like to sleep underneath the duck house or the old duck house, but with the melt, everything's gotten muddy. So they're not even going down there right now. And so this structure really has become their primary 
primary home. When both dogs were puppies, this is where they lived. You will notice there's like a little lagoon going right here right now, but you can also see they have their dog spots. Like Abby's prone to going into this corner and Toby likes to go in this corner. And yeah, I'm just gonna get you guys some fresh bedding and then you guys can spread. How about that? Or at least you can help me spread. <laughs> what you doing, Abs? Queen of the mountain? <laughs> oh, it's your bed platform? <laughs> Abby, you are adorable. All right, we gotta spread this out. Come on. Toss a couple flakes over back here. A couple flakes over back here. I usually do this every about two or three weeks. Abby's having so much fun right now. <laughs> she loves doing this. I don't even understand it. Like Toby has no interest in it. He's just happy to have her make nice bedding for him. But then Abby, she likes to make her Abby nest just like this. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this update from the farm. It's been a lot of fun this morning and I got a lot more to do. And since it's so warm, I think I'm gonna be doing some outside work. Thanks for watching everybody.